I can hear my puppy snoring in the background. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. My name is Jenny Malloy of Lights, Camera, Kale for Workplace Wellbeing, and today we are chatting with Dr. Jeffrey Morrison. Hi, Dr. Morrison. Hi, how are you? So just a bit of background, Dr. Morrison is the founder of the Morrison Center in New York City, and he takes a functional integrative nutritional approach to medicine. So today we're going to be talking about the immune system and the role of the immune system when we do get sick, when we are exposed to a virus, when we're exposed to bacteria. So we'll just start off with what exactly is the immune system? Uh, number one, thank you for having me on your amazing show. Uh, you, I'm one of your biggest fans, so thank you. It's great to be here. I, I'd like to start out by saying that the best offense is a good defense. Hmm. That's how you should think about it. As a football fan, I appreciate that. I thought you might get a little bit of a kick out of that. Basically, the immune system is just uh, one of the ways that our body helps to protect itself from invaders or invading organisms. Our body is amazing in its ability to adapt to the environment, but as we're adapting to, you know, different locations, there's always organisms that are trying to invade us for their own purposes. Mm -hmm. You know, ideally we work, live in harmony with each other, but uh, in invariably there's bacteria, virus, fungus, and then toxins that are directly trying to get into our body for bad purposes. And then toxins can sometimes basically affect how our immune system responds or dysregulate it. Mm -hmm. And when functioning properly, the immune system's in harmony. If there's like an invader, like a infection into the nose or the throat, the body will respond and create a temporary inflammatory response, which then helps the immune system to clear out the infection and then the immune system calms down again. So it's in balance, it's the most amazing defense and it helps to keep us healthy. Out of balance, it can be quite annoying. And I hear you mention bacteria, viruses. Can you explain a little bit the difference? <laughs> size to tell you the truth so it the a virus is basically like a if we really could see it through my through an electron microscope we we believe what we are seeing is protein sh is shells that encapsulate a genetic code within it which is basically a dna or rna code and so it's almost like a spaceship that's floating around that gets into our body and then attaches into our cells mm -hmm. and then puts its genetic information into our cell and then allows our cells to work like a replicating tool. And that's how they, that's what the current theory is on how viruses work. Whereas bacteria are actually cells, just like the cells in our body. And they have their own genetic code and their own ability to like attack our, our cells. So it's size. Mm -hmm. uh, viruses are extremely small. Bacteria are the same size as, for the most part of our, as our own cells. And then there's other types of infections that probably are beyond this conversation. And this makes sense that not just any mask would work when a virus is so tiny, 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 and it's gonna require something like a very specific N95 mask. That's right, you know, the N95s become like the buzzword lately and it's totally impossible to find because mm -hmm. uh, they were needed so desperately at the hospitals and emergency rooms to help protect our frontline uh, uh, healthcare providers, mm -hmm. uh, and there's a small, and I have like a, an example of an N95 right behind me, which basically just has an extremely good filter just in the front that helps filter to the small micron size those uh, viruses from getting access into our respiratory tract, which is where they like to, this particular virus that we're talking about is the coronavirus, which loves the upper respiratory tract and then can uh, sort of go into the lungs after that. So let's talk about the case of viruses. And let's say you have a really strong immune system and you're taking precautions, you're eating well, you're sleeping. Does this prevent you from getting the virus? Does this shorten your symptoms once you're exposed? What exactly is the role of the immune system once you are exposed to the virus? I have a belief system about this, and, and it's not just my personal belief system, but it's based on biologic medicine, which is that if a person is doing certain things to help make their immune system stronger, like eating foods that are improving how their body functions, like lots of vegetables and drinking lots of water and uh, the right amount of protein during the day and avoiding inflammatory foods mm -hmm. like processed foods and too much sugar, 
um, and, and uh, things like that, the immune system can have nutrition available so that it can uh, operate properly. Also, sleeping at least eight hours a night is extremely important uh, for the body's ability to regenerate itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was actually some good articles that came out recently, recently that suggested part of the benefits of sleeping that eight hours is getting into the deep sleep so that the body's able to produce the right amount of melatonin, mm -hmm. the hormone that helps not only get that deep REM sleep for uh, restorative restoration, but it also seems to be anti-inflammatory and an immune booster too. Mm -hmm. And it's, there's been talk that it helps with fighting off viruses. Uh, and then exercise. Uh, you know, just as important it is to restore, it's also important to release. And the exercise, whether it's running or, you know, doing your home workout at this point uh, with your yoga, whatever, it's a great way to help to release stress that gets stored in the body. And also the movement helps with lymphatic drainage and pump, that helps your immune system to pump to all the different parts of the body where it needs to do its actions. Do you believe that having a strong immune system can prevent you from catching a virus? Or is it more about once you get it, that it's gonna be something that's really helpful? Given those things, I really believe that uh, people have the ability to improve their immune response. Mm. And this gets back to what we originally said, is that the best offense is a good defense. So if we can be empowered to improve how our immune system functions, so in invariably, almost everybody is gonna get exposed at, to this pandemic. Mm -hmm. And if a person takes certain precautions and uh, takes certain steps, there's a very good chance that they should feel empowered that their immune system will have a better ability to fight it off. So I, I definitely believe that we can do things to improve how our body responds to infections and then hopefully help, that will help to fight it off. And I, I really like that message that there is stuff that we can be doing other than just washing our hands, other than social distancing, which both are very, very important um, and we should be doing them and we can be eating well, and we can be sleeping, and we can exercise. Does that sound about right? Love it, absolutely. Yeah, and I hear you talk about inflammation a lot, um, and I'm curious, what is the role of inflammation when it comes to your immune system? In the best form, the inflammatory response is really meant to be a finite process to allow the, the blood to come to the area where the infection needs to be addressed, Inflammation basically opens up the blood vessels so that better circulation arrives. Mm -hmm. And that's where the swelling comes. The, the pain that comes with inflammation is actually one of our defenses to fight off the infection. Because just as much as we don't like how it feels, neither does the infection either. Mm -hmm. and, and then also the heat that comes is also part of the way that our immune system fights off infections. Uh, in fact, we also know that the current virus that's going around is heat sensitive. So mm -hmm. we know that when the body temperature rises, that's actually our body getting the, uh, making an unfavorable environment for the infection to be able to survive. But the most important part is after the infection clears, then our body needs to go back to normal functioning. And that's a process that requires healing and removal of all the debris that got sort of, it's kind of like the... Uh, the side effect of war, basically. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a war going on in our body. And uh, there can be some, some destruction of good healthy cells that has to be removed, and then the healthier cells come in to replace and rebuild what was just uh, where the war ground was. Now, speaking of clearing away debris, once people do have the virus, or they presume they have it, and their symptoms are clearing up, they've been giving a waiting period, now, does the virus go away? Do our bodies have a memory of that virus to fight it off in the future? How does that work? Well, after the first line of defense for getting rid of the infection and after it's been cleared, our immune system does have a memory for whatever it was exposed to. It remembers that if it gets ever exposed again, it doesn't have to create such a vicious initial response. It already has antibodies mm -hmm. available that will seek out and destroy. They're like targeted missiles that go directly to those infections and then just kill it before that it can actually take off. And my other question would be, once your symptoms do clear and you've waited the designated amount of time, a lot of people are being told that they can be re-exposed to family members or whomever they're in quarantine with. Now, is this because the virus goes away? Can you explain a little bit more about how that works? 
you know, once the infection has run its course and it's been cleared from the body, then a person is not going to transmit the infection to anybody else. Mm. And, uh, so that's why they're waiting for t- two separate negative cultures to ensure that the infection has actually resolved. The only thing I would say is that's the, what's unique about this current situation is that we just want to make sure that this virus follows the same rules as other viruses. And we're just not sure if there's one or two versions of this going around right now. And I also know you're a big proponent of supplementation to support the body. What would you say your top supplements are for fighting infection, supporting your immune system? I definitely always come back to vitamin C. I think that that's kind of like the the primary one. And there were very early studies uh, years and years ago that showed that when animals that are able to produce vitamin C get sick, they end up producing 10 to 15,000 milligrams worth of vitamin C in their body. And when we get sick, we don't have the ability to make vitamin C. So that's where it's sometimes useful to take it as a supplement. So vitamin C, zinc, and selenium, about 30 milligrams of zinc, 200 micrograms of selenium, which are basically just building blocks for how our white blood cells work. It's nutrition for them. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I do like herbs for prevention too. So right now, astragalus Mm -hmm. is a good herb for prevention, but not good for treatment. There are certain probiotics that are good for decreasing risk for upper respiratory infections. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can find those online. There's, I don't have a particular favorite right now. And uh, vitamin A, vitamin D, those are really becoming hot right now. And definitely vitamin A and vitamin D together is, it works synergistically to improve immune system. So that's kind of like the grouping that I would start out with. That's great. Any other tips you want to share with us? The one last thing is <laughs> one thing that makes the immune system terrible is stress. Yeah. So please, let's not get stressed about what's going on right now. If you're feeling stressed, take a deep breath in and a deep breath out, and that will help calm your nervous system, which will then improve your immune system. Absolutely. So thank you everyone for joining us. This has been Dr. Morrison of the Morrison Center on 31st and Park Ave in New York. My name is Jenny Malloy of Lights, Camera, Kale for Workplace Wellbeing, and stay tuned. We'll be sharing more videos on how to boost your immune system, reducing stress, managing stress, and I will see you all soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye.